to take my life is to put me in a place that we're all going to go anyway, mm -hmm. right? You're either heaven or hell, and I'm going to heaven, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to see Pac, I'm going to see my loved ones again. You know, out of the love for black people. So that's how I got to live, and that's how I have to die. That's how my music has to be. Hey, what's up? This is Frank Alexander. You're checking out. This is 50.com. What's up? What's side? This nigga with Tupac friend for real. <laughs> what's up? What do you think is the best depiction of the whole, um, you know what I'm saying, this Tupac, Biggie legacy and whatnot? Or no story has been told right. You, you know what, uh, Jack, um, it's funny because there's a lot of conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Everybody come up with uh, the hearsay of what they think they know. It's an old cliche saying, if you ain't got it straight from the horse's mouth, you don't have the truth. I was there, so I'm gonna use myself as being uh, the true fact of the matter and of the story because what my eyes seen and what my eyes witnessed I mean who else better can say that I wasn't there mm -hmm. when I was there mm -hmm. so if I tell you something you have to believe what I'm telling you because I've written a book on it I've done all the documentaries on it ain't nobody right. sued you and nothing and, right and we're talking about from the family on oh, right 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 so it's not like yeah. It's got um, to be real. Yeah, yeah, it's real. So, you know, ironically, we're sitting here doing the interview uh, here in Cali, and you're watching Notorious, the movie. What are the chances? <laughs> What's the chances of that? And man, the slim yeah. to none. Slim to none. And uh, the movie, uh, Notorious, uh, you know, of course, we've all seen it. Mm -hmm. um, my personal opinion, I think it could have been done better. I understand the role that uh, Anthony Mackie played as far as uh, Ben Pock in it. Mm -hmm. It had to be very limited because uh, there wasn't clearance to use Pock's image or his likeness or his music for that fact. Wow, I didn't even know that. Well, yeah, you, you, you gotta realize, uh, you have to have clearance from the estate. Everything you see right here, my documentaries, my book, I go straight to attorneys and I say, Hey, I have a project I'm working on. I got something uh, I want to do, and they want to know the title of it so it doesn't conflict with anything that they're going to be doing in the future. Fans today would be like, what happened with Pop? You know, nobody would really know because there's two sides to a story, but it wasn't no story being told. When I decided that I needed to write my book, it was for a couple of reasons. And one of the main reasons was I had something to say. I'm from Chicago, born and raised, grew up there. I'm not made of that kind of material to where something happened to you, I'm gonna be like, I'm not gonna snitch. I don't look at it being like, I'm not gonna snitch. I look at it like, that was my brother. Mm -hmm. Frank, why you showing up? I took off your sleeves. Make a nigga like this feel bad. James, what's up, man? <laughs> I felt like I was being set up to take the fall as being a part of um, Pac's death. Had I not said anything, that would have been my legacy. That would have been my story. That's not how my life is uh, to start or to end like that. I had to write the book. I had to tell uh, the fans of uh, Tupac Shakur what, was, what happened, what my journey and my life was with his for that uh, year that I got a chance to uh, be blessed to spend with him. It was a lot of people, um, they believe that, you know, Suge had something to do with his murder and all this other stuff. It kind of comes across like that inside of your books and like, you know, your the DVDs and stuff. It just started firing immediately. And I'm like, oh my God. And all you see and all you hear is. This Dodge truck was Suge's car. And the next vehicle, if one were to come up, would be my car, where I was at. Like, why do you feel comfortable, you know, even telling this story and like, you don't feel for your life, or, you know, that you could be next and everything? Because this whole big thing is conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And that's why we haven't found out who's uh, murdered him or Biggie these days. That's, that's a very good point you just brought up. I had no fear thoughts of writing my book. Mm. because I wanted to tell my side mm. of what happened with this icon that I was blessed to be with. In the Bible, in Psalms uh, 139, verses 13 through 16, God says, before you were even born, I knew you. I had written in my book everything that you were due, okay? His book is the book of life. Mm. So he knew 
that Pac and I life was going to parallel and come together when it did in 1995 to 1996 up until his death. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't ask to be Pac's bodyguard. It was destined for me to be his bodyguard. It was destined for his death to be when it was going to be. We're given two things in life, a time to be born and a time to die. And no one knows those dates, that last date, except for God. Mm -hmm. He knew when we were going to be born, but we don't know when we're going to die. We don't know when anyone's going to die. He knew Pac's death. I wasn't going to stop or intervene in anything that God had planned, period. The first documentary, which is uh, Before I Wait, is a story of how our lives came together. Now. This documentary is completely different the Before I Wake than the Tupac assassination. Mm. Get the title, it's about his death. It's not about the story of he and I. In 2001, when uh, I did the um, uh, Before I Wake, mm. if you watch that DVD, I'm saying there's absolutely no way in the world Suge Knight had anything to do with this. There's no way in the world I could see Suge Knight sitting next to someone that he had set up right. to get killed as right. he's sitting in the car being a target himself. They had uh, Suge out of the vehicle uh, on the ground, uh, you know, laying on the ground. And as I was approaching him, the blood was shooting up out of his head. But as things started coming out and things started being revealed and more and more and more and more, then I had to back off and I had to step back. I took a giant step back and I said, no. No, something ain't right, okay? One and one equals two, two and two equals four. It wasn't adding up right, mm -hmm. okay? And then uh, my partner and I, uh, RJ Bond, we said, he said to me, he said, you don't want to be a one-hit wonder with Before I Wait, let's do another uh, story, you know, on a pot. So we started doing our research and we started doing our investigative work and he started digging real deep and he started finding stuff and he would bring it to me and we'd be talking about it and I, we were, I was like, man, are you serious? So it was a, a, a re-educating thing for me to start seeing all of this new information. So I did a 360 on my thoughts and the conspiracies and everything like that that was out there. They no longer existed. Why didn't they exist? because I started seeing the writing on the wall. Then I started seeing all the people that was getting killed, all in death row that was around us at that time, okay? And you just asked me that question, am I uh, fearful for doing the documentaries and doing a book? Man, I'm, I'm gonna take one of Pac's quotes. They can only kill me once. That was my first thought, okay? Mm -hmm. They can only kill me once, I'm gonna die anyway. And then the next one was, after I put out all of this information, if Suge Knight uh, felt bold enough to uh, want to put a hit on me or want to come after me, then it's a no-brainer who killed me. Right? Right? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, uh, FBI tapes and uh, wirings, you know, uh, from when they were calling me death threats. I got death threats. Mm. I got death threats. I was wondering about that. Yeah, yeah. They, but they were left on my answering machine. Mm. And I, my phone was being uh, wired and tapped. And okay. Little as, you know, they knew. So all of that uh, became, uh, you know, part of my, my documentary in the third one. I decided I'm going to put the wire tapes in there. Mm. Right. So I put them in there. And uh, a lot of stuff about Pac and Pac uh, actually speaking on things that he was going to be doing in the future. All that stuff we uh, dumped in there. Fear and faith are two words that is like uh, oil and water, okay? Or like daylight and darkness. You can't have both. I gave my life to the Lord uh, in 1997. I became a, a, a man of God. When I decided to uh, turn my life over to God, all fear I had of death was like, poof, gone. Break your knuckles. No! Fear wasn't a part of my vocabulary anymore. Mm. I'm protected in many ways. First and foremost, I'm protected by God. Angels surround and protect me every day. Okay, far and foremost. Well, I ain't stupid. Mm. All right, I'm, I'm not gonna just like depend on God to do it all, but he gives us enough wisdom to know that we have to protect ourselves. Right. So I protect myself in many, many ways. It's no fear, brother. The, the bottom line is there's no fear. Because mm. um, when you watch these documentaries, they're pretty spooky and shit. And I was like, yo, Frank ain't scared. You know what I'm saying? Something going to happen. Out there. When I was telling people I was going to come talk to you about this, they were like, you ain't scared that you going to, somebody going to do something to you from talking to Frank about this shit? And then I was thinking, I was telling them, hey, hey, man, Frank saying this, 
<laughs> hey, if anybody want to kill anybody, hey, I'm just the messenger. I'm just, don't shoot hey, the I messenger. I need these hits. Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Shoot friend. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Well, <laughs> I love Tupac. <laughs>